All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father and His Son, whose name is Yahweh. Bahashem means in the name of His only begotten Son, who is Yahweh Shai. So it's Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So literally, Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God, which means power in the Greek. But in the Hebrew, his name is Yahweh, which means he exists. Bahashem means in the name. Yahweh Shah means he is the savior or he is the liver. All right. And that's who the world, <clears throat> that's who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. So as we see here on the screen, it shows a tent. And it looks like they're out in the desert, right? Well, we're going to have to be pilgrims in the time to come, all right? It's going to come a time where the believers in this gospel will be persecuted. The enemy is going to come in like a flood, like how it states in Isaiah, the 59th chapter. The enemy is Esau, Edom, and these other nations, all right? They are against us teaching our heritage and our truth. All right, so they're going to come for us. So you're going to be in a position, in, uh, uh, you know, to where either you have to leave your home, you know, uh, or you might have to go to another city or, or another, uh, you know, you might have to go from house to house. All right, so we're going to be in this type of situation. You know, you might have to sleep out. You know, uh, in the wild, you know, you might not have no covers. You might not have a covering. Only covering you're going to have is the Lord. Straight up. Uh, and actually, let me read something. Now, the Lord said this to his disciples. All right. But it's, it's the same even to this day. It's nothing new under the sun. All right. So this is Matthew 10, 23. It says, but when they persecute you in this city, Flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, ye, excuse me, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come. So as he, the Lord said to his, to his disciples, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into to another. And that's the main point with this lesson. You know, we're going to be under a state of persecution. That's why we always talk about Jacob's trouble. You know, let me get that in Jeremiah 30 and 7. So this is Jeremiah 30 and 7. You know, uh, let's see. All right, Jeremiah 30 and 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is, is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. So the ones who are going to be saved are the elect, the remnant, you know, that will be saved. Uh, let me go to. Let me go to second. And it's not going to be a long lesson. Actually, I think I have, I have another scripture. Yeah, let me go to Second Ezra. Sixteen. Yeah, this is this. It's not gonna be a long lesson at all. This is Second Ezra sixteen, and seventy. Second Ezra sixteen and seventy in the Apocrypha. Uh, let's see. And it says, <clears throat> let's see. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So let's get this word insurrection. Let's read it back over uh, again. For there shall be in every place and every 
I mean, not in every, yes, Lucky. For there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So that's why Jeremiah 30 and 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, so the seed of Jacob will be in trouble. Yeah, the other nations will they they will fall victim to to the wrath of Esau Edom. You know? And that's Revelations twelve and twelve. Well all this is going right back to. Alright. Let me get it. Revelations twelve and twelve. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe meaning destruction to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth. Because he knoweth. They don't say because Satan, the spiritual uh, entity, you know, it says he, meaning an actual man, because he knoweth that he have but a short time, a short time of rule. Uh, not rule, uh, <laughs> rulership, you know, a short time of uh, being in control, being in power. All right. And also that goes with Job 9.24. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges. Who Who's one of the main judges? Is uh, the who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. He covered the faces, meaning he changed the image of, of, of who the world calls God, Jesus, the prophets. All right. So this he is the actual man. All right. Or actual. Um, of course, it's, it's a man. Right. Esau, Edom. But it, it's the it's the top ruling class families. All right. The Lord or, or the, the prophets. Refer to them, you know, as he, as one, Esau, Edom, all right? So that's why it says he is not just one, but it is a race of people, the Edomites. That's the he, all right? Esau, Edom, all right? Just like if we, if we see a so-called black, Latino, Native American, right? We'll, we'll say, oh, that's Jake. You know, that's a Jake right there, meaning uh, he's the seed of Jacob. That's Jacob, all right? So it's the same thing as Esau, Edom, when we see a so-called white person, or even a so-called black, right? He, he has uh, brown pigmentation. I mean, not brown. <laughs> he has pigmentation, but when you ask him who his father is, he was like, oh, okay, my mom is so-called black. My dad is white. Guess what? He's still an Edomite, so he'll be referred to as Esau, all right? And it's, and it's by his spirit. If his spirit don't match Jake, no matter what his skin color is, you know, he can be an Edomite or another nation. Salaki. So All right, so uh, let me go back to uh, Second Ezra sixteen. Let me get off of this real quick. Second Ezra sixteen, right back at verse seventy. For there shall be in every place in and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Now the word insurrection. Insurrection. All right. And it says rebellion, revolt, uprising, riot, right? Rising, anarchy, unrest, right? So that's why we're going to have to be as pilgrims. Uh, and actually... Hold on, Salaki. Hold on. Something else I wanted to get. Hold on, Salaki. Yeah, Salaki. Damn. I done lost my... I done lost my... Uh, one of my pages. Damn, that's that's what was throwing me off. All right, hold on, Salaki. Damn. All 
All right. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Okay, so this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 40. Salaki. Well, I don't have it marked either. Okay, so this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 40. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle, right? So this insurrection that's, that's talking about in 2nd uh, Ezra 16 and 70, for that should be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. When you read before that, uh, in Second Ezra 16 and 40, it says, Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. So this insurrection is going to be like unto a battle. Now, it's not saying... That we're supposed to pick up arms, right? We're supposed to lend, not uh, we're supposed to believe in the Lord. The Lord is our shield and buckler. All right, this truth is our shield and buckler. Isaiah 33 and 6. Uh, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So in these times, we know to be as pilgrims, not to take up no arms, meaning, you know, uh, you're not supposed to be sitting there. You know, with a group of men waiting to bang on, you know, the, the martial law troops and, and so on and so forth. You know, now, if you got a pistol, you know, and, and, you know, somebody run up on you, you know, and, they, and they're trying to rob you in those times, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know, but as far as you sitting there, hey, we're going we gonna to hit this, 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 uh, this camp right here. You know, take the food, rob, stick. You ain't supposed to be doing all that shit, man. Just straight up. So, all oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle in the in in those evils. Be as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. He that buyeth as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as he had no profit by it. And he that buildeth. As he that shall not dwell therein. Right? Uh, let's keep reading. That they, Salakia, verse 43. He that sold as he should not reap. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they that shall get no children. And they that marry not as the widowers. And that's what you see to this day. I mean, even even that's, that's what you see in these last days. People are plant, planting, building, you know, selling. But they're not going to reap the benefits. And it's going to say that. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. Look, check this out. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children's captives for captivity and famine. Shall they get children? And they that occupy the merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their houses, their cities, their possessions, and their own persons, the more I will so like it, the more I be angry with them for their sin, said the Lord. Right. And so that's the point. So other people are gonna uh, uh reap the benefits of what you planted. You you look, you seek to keep you know, your house in those times when the troops come in, you, you fighting with the troops. No, don't take this. You know, this is my house, my apartment. You know, you, know, you can't eat that. Uh, I planted those. Those are for me. Guess what's going to happen? Look, if you're a man and woman, especially if you're a woman in those times, they're going to take you, you know, you, you're going to learn the hard way. And you know what I mean by the hard way. You know, you're, you're a commodity. And when it comes to war, the Lord said, prepare ourselves for, for our battle. We have a battle that's coming up. Guess what happens to women during war? I ain't got to say it because you already know what's going to go down. And they're not going to pull a bullet in your head first, especially if you're a cutie. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I mean, that's all I wanted to get on this. I can get more than with when the Lord was persecuted. But you know the Lord went through this. We not gonna, we not gonna uh, 
if the Lord went through it, we got to go through it, all right? And actually, let me let me get something real quick. This is John 7, all right? Uh, yeah, this is John 7, starting at the verse uh, 1. After these things, Yahweh shall walk in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill, uh, kill him. So it said that Yahweh shall walk in Galilee. All right. And it said that he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Jewry is Jerusalem. Going to John 5 and 14. And this deals with uh, when the Lord was in Jerusalem. And I believe he healed on the Sabbath day. All right. Which he is. The day of rest. I mean, he is rest. You know, Yahushua is rest. All right. Sabbath goes back, you know, to rest. Shabbat, you know. So this is John 5. And. Damn, I can read the whole thing. All right. So this is John 5. And I started 13. And he that was healed was not who it was. For Yahushua had conveyed himself away and a multitude being in that place. So this guy, basically, the Lord had told this guy not to say who it was. All right. Afterward, Yahweh Shah finded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahweh Shah which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahweh Shai and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Right? So that's why when you read in John 7, it says that he walked in Jewelry. Let me read it again. It's like he walked in Galilee. John 7, after these things, Yahweh Shai walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewelry, Jerusalem, because the Jews sought to kill him. So the Lord was persecuted. Hey, we're gonna go through the same thing. We're not better than our uh than our master, you know. The servant is not greater than his master. So with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Shalom.